everybody, this is Praxis, and I'm still working on this area of the house and taking my time with it, getting it all just the way that I want it. If you look to your left, you can see that I finished the walls that I was boarding uh, just yesterday. They go all the way up to the top, and I want to mention about how to, uh, to do the last couple boards when uh, you're using tongue and groove boards and they go right up to a ceiling. When you're doing tongue and groove board work, the idea is that uh, you take one board, you put it above the other board, and you tap it down. It goes down into the other board, and it engages in that way. Now, uh, if you need the boards to uh, line up with each other and then the top one drop in, obviously if you're going right up to a ceiling, the ceiling is going to prevent you from lifting this board up high enough to drop it in unless you cut this board lower and then it drops and then you have a little gap at the top. So to avoid that, what I did is for the last three courses of boards, instead of nailing them all up, I, I kind of got them roughly in place and made it so that they could kind of bend outwards. And by having a bend outwards, I was able to kind of line them all up and then tap them all in together and have them all kind of slide into place as they went. And by doing that, I was able to get a nice clean line right up at the top. Uh, once I finished that, I was figured I'd start working on this area. Uh, in particular, kind of getting the door framed out. And the door for this wall that's going to be right here is between this line and this line. It's going to be uh, right in this area. And I was thinking about it and I realized that I, I laid this plywood down a little bit uh, incorrectly uh, because uh, there needs to be a, a transition from the height of the tile here down to the height of this floor because this is the finished floor right here. I know it's kind of gray and messy and everything. It'll, be, it'll get cleaned up. But this is the final floor height here and the final floor height here is going to be above that. So we'll need a, a transition area threshold. And if I brought the tile right up to under the door, the threshold would have to be out on this surface. It would stick out of the room, and I think it would look kind of silly. It would be a bit of a tripping hazard. I want the threshold to be right underneath the door, which means I need to cut this plywood back. Not a big deal. That's a great thing about carpentry. It's easy to change things after you've uh, you know, done them. So what I did, uh, I went and I pulled all the screws that are holding down the areas of board that I want to pull up and I'm going to be cutting into it. While I'm doing that, I realize I also would like to change where I was going to be terminating uh, this wall here. Initially, I was going to be having the wall boards out to this uh, surface, and they were going to go right across this uh, post here. But then I was thinking about it, what I'd really like to do is have them terminate before the post. So you still get to see the post. It's a nice architectural element, and I'd like to keep it. So while I'm cutting out the door area, I'm also going to be cutting back by about three quarters of an inch to set the wall boards uh, in just a little bit. Not a huge deal. Again, carpentry is easy to fix. Uh, I'm going to be using this saw to do the cut, but before I do it, I want to make sure that I set the depth of the blade correctly so that I'm not cutting down into the actual floorboards. That would be, that's not an easy thing to undo after you do it. So I don't want to do that. You'll notice I've got the saw unplugged for this. That's a safer way to do it than having it plugged in. You don't want to accidentally hit the trigger and have it go on. There's usually a little uh, locking mechanism for these. I'm going to loosen it up. And what that does is it frees up this, kind of, there we go, it's a little sticky. It frees up this uh, little platform that sets the depth of the blade. There's a little uh, covering for the blade here, and I've got a piece of this plywood, and I'm going to set it right next to there, and I'm going to set the blade so that it will just barely not make it through. Oops, I think that's right. Because I don't want to cut into the floor at all here, so I want to make sure that I'm... There we go. Okay, I need to chop it up a bit. Okay, that's still... Okay. And you see I'm touching the blade here to make sure I've got it at its full extension. That looks maybe a little bit more... Okay, that looks like a good depth. So I'm going to lock that in right there and give it a double check now that I've locked it in case anything slid. Looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've already got this a line drawn where I'm going to be working. I'm going to plug this in. I do a little twist of these guys so they don't unplug accidentally while I'm going. And I'm just going to start cutting the line. As I've said a number of times in the past, this camera auto shuts off in five minutes. If it happens to shut off while I'm doing this, you know, that's just the way of it. Uh, but if you want, you can see me make the cut and uh, maybe I'll get all the way to the end. Maybe I won't because I did all this blabbing ahead of it. So we're going to start by lining up the, uh, the front mark that shows where the blade's going to go in. Make sure I can drop it. Alright, so I got the whole thing all cut out and now it, uh, you know, 
It's not coming up, and the reason for that is that there is plenty of wood that's still here. I, like I said, I didn't set the depth all the way through, so I'm going to be taking this hammer and chisel and using these guys to get us the rest of the way. This will take a while.